Now we told you about potential energy. We had said we lift something some distance, you know, h, and the potential is mgh. Well, well, wait a minute. If I take something and move it horizontally, that doesn't change the potential energy at all because I'm not lifting it. So what if it's right here, some height h1, but when I move it horizontally, it's now a height h2 above the ground. Does that change potential energy? Well, if I'm moving it horizontally, then the work is going to be zero because that means that the force is not in the, if I'm going at constant speed, the force is not in the direction of the uh, motion. So that means the change in potential energy is zero. So the answer is no. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that I could say potential energy here is initial potential energy is zero and the final potential energy is mgh or I could say the final potential energy is zero and so the initial zero and the final is mgh or I could say that the initial is minus mgh and the final is zero. Remember k initial plus u initial equals k final plus u final. So if that is zero and that is mgh, well, I could say instead that that is zero and that is minus mgh. Well, guess what? That doesn't change anything. Or I could say uh, that I could have it right here and here's the initial, there's the final, I can put the, the I can put my zero in the middle, and this is minus a, h over 2, that's h over 2, so I could then say that the initial is minus 1 half mgh, and the final is plus 1 half mgh. Well, notice in none of those cases have I actually changed the equation. Uh, the, it, math, algebraically, it's all the same. So that means the zero of potential energy is totally irrelevant because since potential energy occurs on both sides of the equation, I can put the zero anywhere I want, and all that really matters is the difference in the two. Now, this turns out to be an interesting sort of thing. Uh, we use this in uh, electricity as well. Uh, for example, uh, you have these power lines, okay, and the power lines are actually thousands of volts. Uh, uh, they're not insulated power lines. The, the elevated power lines, they're not insulated. They're not like the wires in your house. These are not at all insulated. And so what happens is you have a squirrel running along the power lines, and the front of the squirrel might be uh, 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 10,000 volts, but the back of the squirrel is also 10,000 volts. Okay, so the difference is zero, not a problem. The problem occurs when the squirrel gets to the end here and then tries to step off of the wire. Okay, and so now the pole is going to be zero volts. So if the squirrel is stepping off, if the squirrel jumps off, then both sides are zero volts, not a problem. But if the squirrel reaches over and grabs something, one of the squirrel is zero, the other is 10,000, and now you have like fried squirrel falling out of the, the sky. And, and that's annoying, especially for the squirrel. Okay. Uh, uh, again, uh, people that work with, with electricity, uh, work with electricity, the power company, they'll have these insulated buckets and there are fiberglass buckets being held by a cherry picker here. And the guy standing in here can actually, because this is all insulated, does not conduct electricity, then they can actually, what they, what they, they do is they actually will have a metal rod. And the metal rod, they just reach out the metal rod and it claps over the wire. And now this is all the same voltage as that. So they can handle live wires without electrocuting themselves. Uh, uh, uh. Don't do this at home. Let only professionals do that because even professionals sometimes make a mistake and you don't want to do this if you don't know exactly what you're doing. But, but this is how they handle live wires uh, with electricity. Uh, something interesting about your house that you've got an electrical outlet here and so the electrical outlet would say that's 110 volts. Okay, 
uh, um, um, 115, whatever, I mean, we'll say 110 volts. And so uh, this middle hole right there is actually ground. So that is supposed to be the same voltage as the planet Earth. Okay, and so that means that that if you've got a piece of, of equipment or something, if it, what you would do is you connect the chassis of the equipment to that third plug right there, and so that means it's the same voltage as Earth. So if you're handling it and you're standing on the ground somewhere handling the equipment, you don't get shocked if something goes wrong. Now, this is your live terminal right there. If you were to measure the voltage between this and ground, that's supposed to be 110 volts. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be 110 volts uh, uh, there. Well, that means this right here is neutral, and it's supposed to be zero. Now, now typically what often happens is in your house, uh, because of, of, of how... Uh, the, you get a little bit of, of uh, uh, voltage across the wires because they have some resistance as current goes through it. The neutral is actually floating slightly above ground, which means this, you know, but that will work. We'll worry about that in physics too a little bit. Okay. Uh, now, sometimes you need to plug in something that uses a whole lot more electricity, like a dryer. And so that would be uh, 220 volts. Okay. And so, uh, uh, how does that work? Well, you would think that that if you measure here, and, and, and pretty much it works this way, if you measure between those two things, it's 220 volts. Okay. But the problem is, if you go out and measure all the wires in the house, you don't have any 220 volt wires in the house, you only have 110 volts. So if you measure from this one to there, that's 110 volts. If you measure between the other one and there, that's 110 volts. That's your safety ground right there. Okay, so, so what happens is one of these terminals right here is minus 110, and the other is plus 110. Now, okay, it's really much more complicated than that because, because this is AC voltage, not DC, and so it, it is actually substantially uh, more involved than that, but uh, the, the fact is that, that these are different phases, and the voltage between the phases is what, what makes the higher voltage that we, we, we exhibit right here. Uh, so, uh, we'll talk more about this in particular uh, next semester, but I don't want to teach AC circuits right now this chapter. So, we'll just pretend it's not AC for the moment. Uh, but, but what happens is both of those are hot wires going into the uh, higher voltage plug. Whereas in the lower voltage plug, one wire is a hot wire, the other wire is the return wire. Okay, which is supposed to be neutral, and 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 uh, um, and it and it is going to have a low voltage on it. Um, again, nominally it's supposed to be zero. In reality, it typically isn't. So uh, again, the whole point is the difference. Now, another example where this comes in is, for example, you've got uh, a car driving down the highway. Okay. And as the car drives down the highway, you got a battery, it's a 12-volt system, okay? So if you measure the chassis of the car to any of the wires in the car, you get 12 volts. But there's something called tribal electrification. Basically, as you're driving through the air, particularly on a dry day, or actually it's even worse if there's some humidity in the air, then the friction with that, it's not really friction, but it, it, it rips electrons off of the vehicle. And so the vehicle actually ends up at a high voltage. And so you could actually have the, the vehicle at, at uh, 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 you know, 3,000 volts, okay? But the wires are now going to be at 3,012 volts. And so the difference is still 12 volts. So all the equipment in the vehicle operates perfectly fine. Uh, uh, what you find, though, is that when you stop the vehicle and you step out, you can sometimes discharge it and get a little spark. Um, that's particularly problematic, for example, with uh, tankers. Uh, 
uh, particularly gasoline tankers. And so the gasoline tanker here, you know, uh, uh, you know, they 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 connect it up to the uh, uh, gas tank at the service station, and the last thing you want is a spark right there. So the gasoline tanker, to make sure that it's always discharged, you'll notice most gasoline tankers actually drag a little piece of metal behind them. It, it, many, many, many years ago, they actually would drag a chain behind them, and the chain hitting the, uh, touching the ground would discharge it. Uh, nowadays, it's like a magnetic strip, or, or not a magnetic strip, but a me metallic uh, piece of cloth, metallic strip that does it. And then before they actually connect up the hose, they actually do have a, a conductor that clamps to the, clamps to the, uh, uh, um, tank and then clamps to the ground to make sure that the tank is the same voltage as the tanks underground so when you connect up the hose there is no spark uh, uh, but again the only thing that really matters is the difference in voltage not the absolute voltage uh, likewise in potential energy the only thing that matters is not the actual absolute potential energy but the difference in potential energy. That means you get to define potential energy the way that you want to define it. And that's a very powerful thing because you normally you find just as with uh, uh, when you pick a coordinate system, you can sometimes pick it so that it's easier to pick it one way than another way. And so the same thing goes the, with potential energy.